Hi everyone, I'm Kim Kerrigan, and as a longtime supporter of the Northeast Arc, I'm very pleased to be here with the director of the Early Intervention Program for the Northeast Arc. This is Ann Dolan. Ann, good to see you. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm sorry we're not in person, but it's great to be with you. I know, but this will do. This will do. So Ann, I want you to tell everyone who's listening, what is Early Intervention? What is that program? Um, early intervention is a program that works together with families of children who are from birth to three years old. So um, what we do in early intervention is we work to support parents to enhance children's development so that they can be successful and happy and enjoy their routines and life wherever they are. So let's talk a little bit about who are the children that you're serving. So the kids that are a part of early intervention are kids that are having some trouble with development. Um, some of those children have a diagnosis, for instance, uh, maybe a diagnosis of autism or deafness or vision loss, Down syndrome, something like that. Some are children that were born prematurely. Um, and we know that often when kids are premature, it, they need a little more help with their development and learning skills. Um, and some kids are just a little bit behind in one area of development or another. There's not a specific reason, but maybe they're not walking when we would expect, or they're not talking quite when we would expect, those kinds of things. Maybe so just hitting those can't. milestones that you expect. Exactly, exactly. Just as the kids that are a little bit behind can take part in early intervention, and our goal is to help them keep achieving milestones, keep moving forward. Yeah. Oh gosh, what great work because how fun that must be to see those kids finally get to those spots. Yeah. I mean, you can't have a better group of people to work with, really. <laughs> Babies are super cute. So, <laughs> but it is, it's a lot of fun because they're, you know, kids are great and, and they want to do things. So, it's really, it is a, a great job to be able to help families and kids continue to meet milestones and be able to do things in their life. You know, and some of them are, um, things that seem kind of regular, like we'd like to be able to get in and out of the car, you know, I, kids being able to help get dressed or help with, you know, getting a meal ready, you know, all those kinds of things that sometimes we take for granted. It's really great to be able to help kids that are struggling, be able to figure those things out. So as a parent, let's say you're a first time parent, so you really don't know what those milestones might be, or you don't know um, some of the issues. Why don't you give us a sense of what parents should be looking for? So I think there is, there are certainly um, books and charts that will tell you, you kids should be able to do this at this point and this at that point. Um, but honestly, there's a range. Every kid is a little different. Um, so I'll give you a couple of markers, but I do want to say, if you think to yourself and your gut says, wow, I, I really feel like they should be talking. Um, you know, the kids in the neighborhood or just my gut says, I, I feel like they should be able to do more or this is not quite right, call EI. Um, you know, it's easy, It's we're pretty low key. Um, and oftentimes as a parent, your gut is right. right. Um, you know, don't feel like, well, the book or Facebook says, and that's mm -hmm. not the same as what I see. I always tell people, just go with your gut, never hurts, you can always call. And say I'm not sure, and, and sure. we'll help figure it out. So but, those markers, what are they? So some of those markers would be, for example, kids who are not beginning to walk at around a year. Um, you might want to look in. Um, definitely by 18 months, if kids are not start really starting to walk, that's a, a sign you might want to give us a call. Um, we typically see kids beginning to use first words at around a year old, um, and beginning to put two or three words together by the time they're two. So for kids that are getting closer to two and are still doing that baby babbling that we don't really understand the words, that's a, a reason to call. Um, another reason that often families come to us is that kids are not um, interacting with people in the way you'd expect. So for kids that are not turning when you call their name, they don't seem to be interested in bringing toys to you and doing the look, see what I have, mm -hmm. um, not responding to other people. That's another good reason to give a call to check that out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that, I'm, I feel sure that pediatricians would also recognize some of these things and send, uh, send some of these children your way. Right. And that often is how families end up in early intervention. They go to their well child visits with the pediatrician and say, you know, I'm wondering, 
I'd, I've noticed, or the pediatrician often asks those questions. What kind of talking are they doing? How are they doing with eating? Um, and often the pediatrician will say, give EI a call. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we, I do want people to know is you don't have to, you don't have to have your pediatrician's permission. You know, in, in our land and day and age of insurance, you almost always need your doctor's say so before you do something. Um, you don't for early intervention. If you have a worry or a question, just call us directly and we'll, um, we'll work that out. And we don't need that, that primary care, that pediatrician's permission to do early intervention. So they're a great resource, but you don't have to wait, especially in this time when pediatricians haven't been seeing kids because of, of, um, of course. pandemic. So we don't want people to wait until their you know, 18 month checkup gets rescheduled. Okay, so let's talk about that. Um, we, you've already said that you know between uh, birth and three is when yes. you guys like to work with these children the most. So talk to me a little bit about um, number one: when is it too early, or is it ever too late? And secondly, um, how do you administer this kind of care? Do do I bring the baby to you, or do you come to me? How does this work? So it's never too early, and it's never too late until you turn three. <laughs> it's actually too late for early intervention, um, but it really there are other resources too. after three. I'm there sorry. are, there yeah. are certainly, and if you call one of us um, in early intervention and your child is turned three, we'll help you out with who should you call in, instead of us, of course. Um, but there really is never too early. Um, a lot of people feel like, well, they're just a baby. There's nothing. There's nothing they're supposed to be doing and there's nothing you can do, but there really is in an early intervention. We really believe the sooner we start um, trying to support kids and help them, the better. Because my goal is I, when kids can't do something, they get frustrated and then they give up. If, if you're trying to communicate and talk with someone and they don't understand you or you don't have the ability to make the words, you get frustrated and you give up. And I don't want that to happen. So there's never a too soon, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Um, the way that we provide early intervention is actually a little bit different than most services. Typically, early intervention will come to you. Mm -hmm. um, we will come to your house, to your child's daycare, to the nannies, wherever kids are, that's where we go, mm -hmm. which is wonderful because the kids we're seeing and working with are little and, and they're most comfortable at home. Mm -hmm. um, also, the other big benefit is when we're talking about, okay, we'd like to encourage walking and building strength for walking, instead of giving you a list of exercises, do these three times a day for 10 minutes, like you or I might get if we were building strength or going to the personal trainer, um, what we'll do is say, okay, what do you have around the house? What things are you already doing that we can sneak this into? Right. Because toddlers don't really cooperate with things like exercises. Right. They pretty much do what they want to do when they want to do it. Um, so that's always our strategy is to really sneak things right into what family is already doing. Um, and so typically we come right to you wherever that might be. Now, it's a tiny bit different right now because we're obviously not coming to families home right. in the middle of our pandemic. Um, so we're using um, Zoom and telehealth to provide early intervention services, which actually has been going really well. Right, so tell me how you do that, because we've just talked about you know, being in, on the floor with the kids, so how are you doing that? Exactly, it's a good question. So our goal in early intervention um, is to support the parents and the caregivers for the child so that all these ideas and things that you can do in your day, they're able to do them. And so our work traditionally is less directly with the child and more with the family who's playing with the child. So okay. if we're playing a game and trying something out, it's really the parent or the nanny or the teacher that's doing it with the child. And we're a little bit on the outside edge there, kind of consulting in. Right. So the beauty of that is via telehealth, we're just not actually in the same room as you. We're just on the screen, but it's the same setup. We're doing the exact same work. Um, and that's really been wonderful because it does translate very nicely. We can still say, so, okay, Kim, how has that been going? Give it a shot and say, what if you moved the book a little closer or turned yeah. a little to the left, that kind of thing. Um, and so right. that's really what we're doing now. Good. That's very cool. similar. We just don't actually come through your front door. <laughs> so um, for those who are watching, they may be wondering, um, am I in the area that, of service? 
So where do you guys, uh, you know, are there specific cities and towns that you serve? Yes, yeah, so the Northeast Arc has two early intervention programs, um, and we those two programs cover most of the towns in the North Shore area and the Cape Ann area. So it's a total of 20 towns. Um, if you live outside those areas, there are early intervention programs, of course, across the state, covering every town in the Commonwealth. Um, but we cover the North Shore and the Cape Ann area. Okay, terrific. Uh, anything else that you'd like to share about the program that we haven't talked about? Well, I think one of the one important piece that I want people to know is we already talked a little bit about you don't need your pediatrician to come to early intervention. You also do not have to have medical insurance. You don't need health insurance. If a child has health insurance, we do bill our services to health insurance. Mm -hmm. But if you don't or your insurance doesn't cover early intervention, the Department of Public Health picks up the rest of that tab. So there is no out-of-pocket cost for families. You don't pay co-pays, deductibles, fees, any of that. Um, so that's an important piece to know, I think. Um, and the other is there's no downside to calling. Even if you think, well, I don't want to waste their time. I'm not really sure. Call us and we'll talk it through. And even if we do an evaluation, worst case scenario, we'll say, you guys are doing great. And watch for these things in the next couple of months, and you can always come back again if you want. I think those are the big parts. Don't wait for your pediatrician. There's no cost to you, and there's really, there's never a wrong time to call. So, Anne, after uh, early intervention has seen my child for a period of time, and we hit that three-year-old mark, does the Northeast Arc automatically refer the child to another program? How does it work? Well, we certainly, we certainly might. Um, for when we get to close to the age, age three, uh, we'll work with the family to say, do we think your child still needs some more help and support? And if they do, then we'll certainly refer them. Mm -hmm. The Northeast Arc has some programs that sometimes our kids, kids refer right in there. Sometimes the public schools or certainly other services. But a lot of kids um, just stay in early intervention for a very short time. Some kids are just here for six months, maybe a year. There's a particular thing they need a little help with. And when you don't need us anymore, we say, great knowing you, um, you know, and, and let you go. So it's not a forever thing if it's not needed. But when kids continue to need support, then we're certainly here to help transition them to the next phase and the next, the next great service. 